Welcome back and now to our discussion for the day. In April 2015, a month before Buhari assumed, the headline inflation reading was 8.7%. The following year, it spiked into the double-digit range and remained in the range since then. Nigeria's inflation rate rose 22.04% for the month of March 2023, higher than the 21.91% reported for the month of February. That's according to the recent Consumer Price Index report released by the NBS. Last year, Nigeria's inflation rate for the month of March was 15.92%, forcing the central bank to commence monetary policy tightening. Meanwhile, on a month-on-month -month basis, the inflation rate for March rose by 1.86% up from 1.71% recorded for the month of February this year. I have joining me uh, right now, journalist and social commentator Ayodeji Ake. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Good morning. Good morning to our other media. Yeah, good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's start this way. The level of inflation continues to rise despite the central bank's monetary policy tightening over the last year. In February, Nigeria's central bank increased its benchmark monetary policy rates to 18%. In all of this, uh, how have we not been able to tighten this issue of inflation? We do MPC almost um, uh, every other month, and at the end of the day, inflation keeps spiking. What have we failed to see, Ayo? Once again, I want to say thank you for having me on your program. And um, like I said, the, the issue of inflation, I've mentioned it before now, that is just like an elephant in the house, mm. or in the room, rather. And um, people fail to um, not talk about it, probably because um, we have other things we want to address. But these things are what we just need to talk about and see how we can address them. Now, you just mentioned about the Central Bank of Nigerian policy and um, how they've been able to increase to about 18%. But over time, there have been arguments. We keep asking ourselves, this administration have over time said they are the best ever since. They've invested too much in agriculture to ensure that we have enough food to eat and, you know, we produce our own food and we stop importation. But it's quite unfortunate. Now, uh, recently, um, I don't know if you get to see the, uh, the reports or, uh, from the presidency. Well, they were saying they were having the issues of uh, middlemen, they were having the issues of uh, COVID-19. And I asked, what is the problem? If you have the issue of middlemen, why have you not been able to, you know, to, um, to, to settle it, um, you know, to address it before it gets out of hand? And if you are talking about COVID-19, uh, I do think, um, yes, I understand that um, not only Nigeria is um, having the issues, if you go to the United Kingdom, if you go to the U.S., they are also facing this crisis and but they are they are trying their best to see how um they can yeah, they can give their citizens some sort of palliative you know to help them um, maneuver this crisis but it's just quite unfortunate now there is no way we want to talk about this inflation that won't go back to the basis there is no way we want to have high cultural produce without talking about insecurity the middleman they've said like they said, and the COVID-19. I was part of a journalist uh, in 2018-19. Uh, we had a media training in Abuja, and we were, we were pitching our ideas, we read a lot of stories, urging the government to set up an epidemic um, emergency unit. That is, um, um, you know, preparing the government for epidemics. We are talking about epidemic. We didn't know that in 2020, Nigeria will be hit with pandemic. See how it works. So if Nigeria had... I mean, we prepare for epidemics, then maybe we would have just had one or two to probably battle the pandemic. But thank God we are, we are out of it and we are still trying to do one or two. But the most important thing is the insecurity, you see the major issue that will need to be addressed. If you go to the north, you see um, you see some local government, the main local government, um, you know, the, 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 the insecurity are taking over, bandits and everywhere. They can't even go to their farm freely. And some that could afford to go to their farm, you don't expect them to, you know, to manage to get farm produce and stay, sell it at normal price. The demands are still there, but we have shortage in supply. So I still don't know. Maybe all these um, CBM policy, government interventions are just media hypes or, um, um, or media written or um, airing policies. But we need to see what exactly. We are, we are not seeing results. Look at what you just said now. Inflation is um, about 22.2%. 
food price inflation is about 24 plus over 24 percent and contrary to where we have in 2015 before this admission took over in january 2015 we have about 9.2 mm. so i don't think um i don't think um the this administration have done well if you think you have the issue of insecurity okay before before yes we've had insecurity we have the issue of the headmen issue and you know ravaging everywhere and these people could not go to their family and even to today is still there so it's quite unfortunate so for me mm. well the, the cbn um, may have um, said they've done well but yes you may have done well coming to tv coming to radio reading reports and you know um applaud yourself for doing well but we are not seeing anything nigerians are not you know seeing the effects of what you are doing that's what i can say on that all right, Aya, there's been several issues uh, plaguing uh, monetary policy, even um, the fiscal policy with a uh, high uh, cost of um, uh, debt and debt services. We've not been able to address all of that now. So uh, there's a new administration uh, coming up in less than two weeks now. What should the major focus uh, be on? Because we had a single uh, digit inflation before uh, this uh, present administration. How can we get back to where we were and um, ensure that Nigerians can actually uh, have um, foods in their stomach, not that they go to the market today and the next day uh, the price of food has actually doubled by over 100%. Okay, I will start by saying, why is regime? I think the major, for me, I think the major problem was that he came in and said, he want us to produce our food locally. A very fantastic idea. I feel that is fine and we can do that. If you have things in place, you shut the border, you want us to stop importation. But when you are bringing new mechanism, that is not the best way to go about it. There should be check noting. You don't want, you want us to stop importation, fine. You want us um, to produce locally, fantastic. But why not close the border for a few months, send us back to the farm? If there is of, um, the issue of insecurity and everything we just mentioned, try to work on them. Open the border for another few months and see how we can strike a balance. But you know, those things just disrupted all the all, all the all the work. But fine. Thank God it's not as bad, although it's, it's bad. From nine to twenty from nine two thousand and twenty-two is nothing we can agree. Now, if you are saying the new administration is coming and debt, yes. Well, I don't know. Tunubu is not a magician, he's just a politician. <laughs> and I feel um, a lot of people have praised him over the years that uh, he has the capacity to turn Lagos State into um, a wealth um, state. And we, we are believing and we are hoping that he's going to do so many um, um, things for us in Nigeria, and at least to dig us out of the poverty um, pit. But like I said, <laughs> it's not a magician. We just need to look into so, so many things. Now, first, when he, um, when he was campaigning, I think he mentioned the issue of insecurity, which I just mentioned is also affecting us. Now, don't forget, if you look at the, this issue of um, insecurity and this food um, uh, crisis you're talking about, the inflation you're talking about, food, um, there's, there's one um, particular report from the Food and Agricultural Organization file that says that if we are not careful, about 25 million Nigerians are at risk of facing hunger between june and august this year so that means to so this administration will be the one to inherit if we are not careful so what i would suggest since he said he wants to tackle insecurity like he has said when he's when he was asked the question during the interview or during his campaign he said he's going to recruit more paramilitary and military to ensure that our people can go to their farm fields and also they should uh, they should be able to uh, in terms of multiple roads for them to go to the uh, farm and do all these things now there's no magic to debts. All right. There's no magic to turning. Are you listening? I'm listening to you. Are you? Go ahead. Yes. There's no magic turning when one dollar to um, to one dollar to one uh, one uh, one uh, one dollar to one era uh, overnight. I keep saying it. It has to do with balance of trade. Mm. You can't be depending on other country and wake up one day and expect one government to come and expect that. Well, that government will just make one dollar uh, one dollar to the one dollar. It's impossible. We all need to produce. What are we producing in Nigeria? It's, it's as bad that we so much depend on other countries because we import from them. We can imp we import our undies, we import our toothpicks, we import almost everything. And for those that are even importing, that are even manufacturing in Nigeria, mm. they're even ashamed to 
to market their product. You, you produce something in Nigeria and you write made in China. It's quite unfortunate. But we don't need to go into that. What I would just want to tell them, um, the boy, um, the Tinubu regime, I don't know where you want to get money, but if you look at what has happened over time, it, it, um, this um, first subsidy remover, how Nigeria got a loan from the World Bank about mm. $800 billion. Uh, billion. I had the finance minister said they want to lift about 50 million Nigerians out of poverty. And they, according to me, a very poor strat strategy saying they want to um, distribute about 5,000 naira to them. <laughs> and I keep asking, what can 5,000 naira do in Nigeria today? How will it actually lift people I out of poverty? for free. Mm. I need to. Yes, I was just uh, agreeing with you. I was wondering how the 5,000 so would I, actually lift no, them out of poverty. It's, it's, it's funny. I don't know what 5,000 naira can do in Nigeria today. Mm. So, I don't know. You okay. can, with okay. that 500, with, with, the, with the 800 billion dollars, mm. there are a lot you can do. Instead of distributing the money, no, you don't need to distribute them. Okay. What you need to do is, let there be, let you, know, you need to invest in the private sectors. The All private right. sectors are there to help us. These farmers, like you said, they are middlemen. The money and the money the central bank has claimed, the presidency or the Bahia administration has claimed, they are giving to these people, are not getting to them. All right, Ayo. Um, have a direct contact with them. Are you with me? Yes, I was just... Uh, have a direct contact with them. Have a direct contact with them. Let them know. Let them tell you what the problems are. Then with this $800 billion, they have a association. Meet, on, meet with them one-on-one -on -one and give the money directly to them. Let them make more food available for Nigerians. Let them be able to meet their demands. Now, for insecurity, I just believe the incoming administration can do better, like he has promised. Probably um, he's going to increase the parameters and the military sector, more equipment and everything. Maybe that will actually solve the issue of insecurity because once the insecurity is, is out of it, then we can go to our farm family and these prison farmers can do, um, can start producing and reproducing. But if not that, there's nothing we can do. That's for me. Um, I, I wish that we had much time to talk more about um, the issues of um, transportation and subsidy removal, but I would have to bring you again to look at all of these um, salient points because we need to tackle this um, head on. Ayodele Ake is a journalist and a social commentator. Many thanks for being. Ayodeji Ake is a, a, a journalist. Uh, thanks for being a part of the show. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, as we go on the show, we're we'll looking at something that is also very, very, very important. Now, there is the need for professionals in the built environment to form strong advocacy against quackery and sharp practices. If the tide of incessant building collapse in the country uh, must be stemmed, uh, this formed part of submission of stakeholders at the 13th edition of the Lagos Architect Forum. Now, the forum brought together architects and other professionals to share thoughts on the theme, the city of Lagos. What is Lagos? I'll leave you with details of that. I'll return again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonye. Bye for now. Lagos is the fourth capital of Nigeria, known for its uniqueness as an economic hub, high-flying business hub, and a city that has long captivated people from all over the world. However, these architects have converged to share ideas and critical insights to effectively midwife a livable and sustainable Lagos state. We try to analyze the physical development within the city of Lagos and see how we can get government to uh, key into some of the uh, suggestions that uh, as professionals we think they should uh, key into. When we talk of the thriving city in the world, these are cities that never sleep. What it is all about is to synergize, to interact with the private sector, the public sector, the manufacturers, the suppliers of building uh, materials. In recent times, incidences of building collapses have become recurring, even with a city as commercial as Lagos. As one wonders how this tide can be stemmed, government is advised to ensure monitoring as enforcement does not stop when approval is given. The professionals believe that state government should domesticate a national building code as well as show political will to stop the menace. The building code actually has some compliance forms built into uh, the document such that at various stages of the development of the building of a, uh, of a building, you have relevant professionals 
signing off at different stages. Are we shying away from our responsibilities? Are we ready to take up our responsibilities? And to be honest with you, please be ready for more collapses. Because if we are not ready to do the right thing, then be sure that these uh, 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 tragedies will continue to occur. Until we can have a proper governance structure on the construction process, where we start to track who designed, who supervises, what are the stages of construction, what are the stages of certification, and it's available on a digital platform. This is why this is Lagos. The NIA ensures that it will continue in its advocacy role as watchdogs to promote best practices in the building procurement process to avert ugly consequences of building failures and collapses. Justin Akadonia, Plus TV News, Lagos.